Hello guys and welcome to today's video. Today, I'll be playing some full AP Swain with Rabadon Staff Cap, building a more burst heavy build which will result in greater damage. I have two games to show you, first game APC bot lane, then second game mid lane against Asia. Remember to subscribe if you like my content. Now on to the video. Well, both bot laners are fighting for level 2, but we can see here we're not gonna get it first. Simply back off, you do not wanna fight two people as level 2. Just let the wave come into you now. I'm playing against Estrel and Janna, so we need to have some pretty good movement here, so we can dodge out on a lot of the damage. Right now I'm just gonna farm as good as I can, and look for fishing with E, so we can poke them down or maybe get an all-in angle. I see Janna step inside the wave. This is usually a guaranteed E, because of E extent. So look for these E's, those are the ones that have pretty high success rate. I take a really bad trade here, getting hit by a tornado in SGW, actually get poked down super super far and to use all my pots already, it's pretty bad. Especially now because Graves shows up as well, so we might be looking at a dive. Graves is posturing to dive, here I can do two decisions, I can run up, try with Ghost and try and get out, but I will lose all the creeps, or I can run down and try and outplay the dive together with Bard. I'm feeling pretty confident, I'm gonna run down, I'm gonna use Ghost very early here, so I can create some distance between me and Graves, so he doesn't just one-shot me. And I buy enough time for Estrin to die to the tower shots, and Bard actually manages to kill one more as well. So it's a two for one, I'm gonna lose a lot of minions though. Is it worth? Maybe, I think it's very good, because we waste a lot of Graves time, so my Karsix gets more room to play. I'm just gonna drop down, push the wave, put some wards out. And now we're actually in a pretty good position, me and Bart. We're just gonna let the wave come to us now, look at this. Let them push into us, take it slow, we are in a pretty good position. But keep the wave outside your tower, do not let it crash, okay? Now they need to walk really far up, and we're safe from any roams or ganks. And we can potentially find an all-in angle to run people down in the long lane. Janna stands inside the castle, so I'm gonna go for an E, get an E extend on her, and me and Bart just one-shot her. This is very nice, now we just push out the wave quick, and look to pressure plates. But well, the Graves comes down there, so I'm just gonna take a base and spend this money. So I can come back really strong to lane. Again, look at this E extend on Janna. Very easy to hit, guys. If the opponent has a bad habit of standing inside minions, it's just so free to just hit these E's all the time. Understand enemies' patterns and abuse their weakness, okay? Because we're in a, like a winning position here in Bath, we're gonna put more pressure on them by pushing and hitting and getting plates. But this also puts you in danger for ganks or TPs, etc. So we actually get punished here. Take this in note. Whenever you're pushing, you're in danger for a counterattack. I come back and clean up with Kha'Zix, I just help him with Drake now, I'm gonna look to try and snap this Janna, she's very low HP right? But she's pretty smart so she doesn't stand in the obvious place. I'm just gonna run down bot again, push out the waves, and try and pressure this Ezreal away from the farm. Bart is doing a great job at doing that, and we managed to get a plate because of it. I go and hide inside the bush to land a free E.
EX stands are great guys, especially standing inside Casta minions, it's just guaranteed almost. We're not gonna do anything crazy right now. Just farm the waves. Bot is roaming. I'm just gonna make sure I don't die. And just collect as much resources as I can while staying safe. Even though you're just farming, you can still assist your team a lot with W's. And now since Graves is dead, I'm gonna push out the wave quickly so we can dive this Ashreel. After the kill, take the tower, push out the wave, recall spend your money. Since bot tower is gone, usually as APC you will want to go mid lane, so that's what I'm gonna do. Mid lane is the safer lane once the bot tower falls, you are very centered in the map and your jungle and support should be nearby. But since I get stopped, I'm gonna run top and collect a kill, push out the tower, push out the waves. Being very proactive on the map, running around. Now since they have another guy on death timer, I'm back mid again, hitting this tower. Look how many towers we've just gotten in at the span of 5 minutes. This is the snowball effect in high elo, when everybody knows what to do. Small mistakes where the enemy is dead for 30 seconds, they just gonna lose the entire map because they are down a person. We get some kills, but the dive goes pretty bad. I'm gonna ghost ult here and look at this dodge. Dodge on the Q. And now slowing with R2 to hit a guaranteed E. And now the play is actually isn't that bad. I was, the reason why I was going forward is I wanted to Q flash Ashreel, but he gets out of range. Finally, now it's time. Rabadon's death cap swing. Look at this. I have 481 AP. It's time for demon mode. I catch two people in the extent and look at this. And I flash the Janna Tornado and the one shot Ezreal. But I'm not done yet. Look at this insane damage, bro. I'm over 530 AP when Conqueror is stacked. And one rotation pretty much one shots all squishies. Because they are dead, we collect Tower, we collect Baron. I'm gonna recall, get the Rylice here, I just have perfect money for that. And now we run into the base and sadly they FF and I don't get to destroy more with Deathcap, but it's fine, I have a second game to show you. I'm up against Asir mid this game, this is definitely a tough, tough matchup. He has grasps, so he would be looking to walk in up, proc it on me all the time, it's very annoying to play against. So far he's doing a great job at dodging my abilities and plugging grasp on me. I'm trying to hit him with E-Extend on the wave, but I haven't been successful yet. So I'm just gonna do my best to farm minions and hopefully some opportunities will arise later in the game where I can give my team some impact. As this matchup is a lot of suffering, it's definitely not easy. I'm trying to stop his base with W, it's not successful, 
Just gonna collect the minions here as best as I can. And now since he TP's back, I'm gonna try and insta shove the wave and then look to base TP myself. I love TP against these matchups where you really need this this base at this point because or else they're just gonna base TP and then you are just gonna suffer so much. So I come back to the wave here. He pulled actually pulled the freeze. He's not thinning out the wave correctly. So I can just force the wave into his tower. Look, because the wave is too big, right? He cannot stop it. So it doesn't really matter that he pulled the freeze. With this timing here I got, since I crashed, I'm gonna play some wards out, get some mission for my team, maybe avoid a jungle gank, and then just back to farming. And try to fish with ease, to collect some free stacks. Look at these traits, like if I hit everything, I can actually even it out, but it's easier said than done. It is very difficult. Sadly my E is too slow here, so it doesn't follow up on the CC, but we burn this flash, I'm just gonna push the wave and recall spend my money. I just come back, collect the wave, try and trade on him a bit, he has demolished, so he's gonna go for plates this game. But the more important than collect the mid wave is the fight I'm spotting up at my red side, so I'm just gonna run there. I have a much faster path than a seer. And look at this EIE extend on both of them. Vigo does an insanely nice ultimate and we clean up all the three. After the kills, as I usually say guys, quickly push out the wave. Only take a plate if it's low, but then also you need to base now and spend the money. Look, I had 1400 gold. We need to match Asia in items, okay? I get boots so I have more mobility to dodge and I can run to fights. Look at this. I come back to lane but Asia is actually zoning me. But I actually see Lisin in the river, so I'm gonna do a little sneaky run here and get there first. Because I'm not really winning through midwave, the 1v1. I need to do these small sneaky plays to have an impact over Asia. Because my destiny in mid lane is already set for me. The 1v1, it's over, okay. But I can change my own destiny and altering the game with the roams. I'm pushing out the way, I'm just gonna go grab plant here, get some HP back. So now I'm actually ahead in a HP. And I do this very nice fight here, walk with E. I'm gonna try and run back and dodge the ultimate, I'm not successful. So I almost outplay him, but it's not enough. I'm very certain Lee Sin is nearby, the way he's playing. But Lee Sin does a very very nice E. He does get shaded though, but it's still annoying a bit. Really misses a Q, but it's okay. I'm just gonna TP back instantly here. Get Pryo quickly. But this was actually a big mistake. Because I should have TP top, but I didn't look at map. So now my team suffered. But don't be too sad about it. Just do the best play in your situation, which is to push out them with mid wave. And I'm gonna go and help my Viego jungle invade enemy blue buff. So we at least get something. From my mistake. After getting mid pro, I see a bot fight brewing. I'm gonna run down there before I see her and just pop ghost now. I have malignants, sword shoes, a lot of damage and magic pen. And just clean up and since Asia actually decided to follow me, he has to die as well. Again Asia is dead, return to mid, push out the wave, so he loses creeps. And then recall spend your money. 2200 gold to spend. I get large rod. And I'm gonna get a build to build in towards the Rylice. Because that was like the best item I felt like I could buy for 900 gold. 
Now I'm playing weak side and look at this, I spot Lee Sin. A bot that could happen. Also you see Azir moving down as well. So they are 4 man bot side. And I don't have people nearby yet. I'm gonna wait until my vehicle gets nearby. And we actually spot Lee Sin here. I'm actually gonna dodge his ult knockback. Look at this. I know he's gonna kick right. Wait until he kicks, then I run forward. And now we're just gonna need to chase them down. Because my bot lane came into help as well. And we are in the winning position now. It's very important you don't just walk up there in complete weak side, the 1v4, and just die. And then the enemies are in advantage. And they can start taking your tower, etc. Be patient, play around your team, okay? If you're weak side, sometimes just back off, man, and give. Okay, it's okay to give prior if you're alone against four men. I just push out the waves. We can't spend my money and then I'm gonna go mid. Look at this. I see a spot. There's three men top and Jace is dead. So there is nobody on enemy team to stop me mid. I'm not gonna TP top just for fun. I'm not gonna run up there. Pressure the lanes where there is no resistance. Okay. It's very annoying for the enemy team when I do this because they have nothing to stop me. And my team, look, they won on their own. Would have been a waste of TP, instead I collected resources in mid for free. This is how you really hard abuse when they have a death timer, right? So Jace was dead, so he couldn't. He was the guy that was supposed to stop me, but he couldn't. So I abused that factor. And now I help Malphite with W to keep Eagle stowed, and he does a crazy dodge here. I'm gonna keep the tempo, keep the pressure high, quickly push out this midwave, and now base and spent all that gold I just got. I'm running bot because I have TP so I can always just join fight and we have an idea they are on Baron. I'm gonna spot it with W and now I'm just gonna instantly TP to the flank ward because my entire team is moving. I have a ghost right and I have a lot of items. Pink ward the bush and now they are just sitting ducks. Clean them up. And if we kill this in as well, they have no jungler, so we can just do Baron. With Lee dead now, take Baron. I'm gonna go back, get another large rod. I'm gonna move towards Drake now. Collect that as well. And now since Jace is top, I'm gonna base, stop him taking this tier 2. I don't want him to get 700 gold for free here. So I stop him, collect the wave, and now look at this, we actually, we need to take top lane tier 2. And since I'm already up here, my team has rotated towards top side jungle. I'm gonna guide the wave to the tower and my team is ready to collect this tower now. So we're gonna fight for it. We burn their ults and we take down the tower. We are about to run here, but actually I noticed Twitch is stepping up too much and I know I can hit him here with a knee extend. So that's what I do. I'm gonna pop ult here, start slowing him with Rylice, and now my team can just follow up. Look at this damage, man. So much. Two men on death timer as well. We take inhibitor and we're gonna rotate towards mid, try to get that inhibitor as well. We jump on a seer, but we actually get baited pretty hard. He wastes so much time with Sonyas, so Twitch cleans up two people. Vayne is gonna trade back now though. But it wasn't their best play in base here. Yeah. We should probably have just backed off. But it's, it's always easy to say afterwards. Also because yeah, we get flanked by a seer. They do one shot him, but... It's like an... It's usually not good to trade evenly when you're behind, right? Because that will lessen the gap between you and the enemy team in gold. Also because they can collect a lot of bounties. And it's okay. Once you all respawn, focus up again. I'm gonna go down bots. I have TP again so I'm gonna just join fights. We need bot lane inhibitor. That's their last standing inhibitor. I'm gonna push the waves here. And look again, my team. Hovering. We are all on the same page. We all know what we need to take. We just take this tier 2. We're gonna pressure a little more 
I take a pretty big trade here because I actually I didn't see a CR man. I was walking up for the ward. So I could chunk down to 30% HP. I'm gonna base and TP back. Also because I have Seek's arm guard. I can feel it's gonna be very good this fight. And I want full HP. We pick off Lee Sin. And now we just need to 5 man bot. I'm gonna W top to push the wave quicker. Malfoy does a crazy engage. I'm not the biggest fan of this. So now we even it out. And Twitch is feeling it. So he's gonna run in. I spot him here. So I know I can land this E when he steps forward. So I hit him. One shot him. Walk forward. One shot Lulu. Look at this damage man, rabbit on death cap. I am over 600 AP and my abilities seriously hurt so much. I actually kinda enjoy this build. Also the healing is great once you get a lot of AP. Definitely something I need to play more and I love experimenting with these new and different builds. Hope you enjoyed this full AP swing gameplay and also hope you learned something from my detailed commentary. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.